Hi, I'm just I'm just trying to get a few things sorted out here. Just bear with me. Mom. What? We're on. Oh, uh, okay. Well, let's, let's talk about this on the breakcast today. So, so Pat, you've got some things that you want to sort. So we have these things here, and we want to sort them from smallest, the shortest, to the tallest in a row. One easy way to do this, obviously, there's only four items that can be easy, but let's if Let's, for simplicity, just came with the, ax, the the idea, is to compare the two items, and if this one's shorter than the next one, then you just leave things alone. And then we go to this one, and we do this, okay, yeah, and then like this. And now we go back to here, and we're done. And we can say that the items bubbled up to their location, or down, depending on how you want to look at it. The tallest ones went down, and the other ones went up. Now, if we were to say, do this the other way, so these go, okay, cool, and then we looked at this one, yep, yeah, okay, and then we looked at this one, yep, yeah, okay. Now here's interesting, this is the bubble sort, which is the worst of the sorting algorithms. And we can look at this in some code, and we're going to do that in a minute. But one of the things that you may, as you're doing it physically, see is that once an item has made it to the bottom or the top, depending on which way you're, you're sorting, which way you want to look at it. But say the, the most, in my case, closest to me, but let's say this is the bottom of a stack. And we'll look at it visually that way too. We don't have to look at this one anymore. We know that nothing will compare and swap with it. So we can keep that in mind as we go through our looping and decide, hey, once we've gone through one loop, we're done. And what will happen is the inner loop will get smaller. So what I mean is, okay, this one we know is right here. So we we'll swap these two, and we swap these two. I know because the last time the biggest item got found and made its way that I don't need to compare these two at all. I can and go, yep, we don't have to swap them. But in an algorithm that's going to run a bunch of times, that is slow. Because that is an unnecessary comparison. You know that this item isn't here. Now we go back to th this one is taller than that, and we swap. And again, here we are, and we can stop because we know this one is the next tallest without comparing it again. And a lot of the algorithms will do that. In fact, when they first teach it, then you'll compare these two, and, compare, and you get all these unnecessary comparisons. Now, if we were to swap it around something like this, we can see, observe the, the same behavior yet again. We can swap. Okay, cool. We can swap. No, wrong. Nope, we don't swap these. And we can swap. Oh, look at that. One time through and I'm completely finished. Now, someone's going to say, well, hey, smarty pants, what if it's at the bottom? Well, we'll compare, but we won't swap. And then we're done. Bye. See you in the lab. All right, now we're in the lab, and as we've used previously, we have our Apple emulator. Let's go to color mode. And uh, here we are with some text that we've seen before. So we're going to do bubble sort, if I can spell. And this is going to be our code that we're running. And we'll take a look at it in a minute, but let's just run it. So part of what this does is lets us decide how many we want to do. So for simplicity's sake, just like we did with the demonstration with the bottles, we're going to do four. Now you see this happens very quickly. We have some random numbers that are generated and they're sorted out rather quickly. But if we do this, say 20 of them, you can see the Apple computer is a little bit slow. Uh, I did this out of a hundred and it took over two minutes, which is a bit too long for our demonstration purposes here. And there we go. So you see we had a random number of 170 and 216 and 122 and the like, and now they've all bubbled to their proper positions, 61 being the lowest number and 476 being the highest. Now this comparison doesn't look for duplicates. Now in this case we don't have any. But uh, if we chose more numbers, we could probably get duplicate uh, random numbers being generated. 
All right, so now we'll go look at the actual code. Okay, the code itself is uh, rather long, so we'll break it down into chunks. So 10 through 50 are some remark statements that kind of put us what we're doing. Uh, we're going to clear the screen on 20. We're going to go to the home position, obviously in the text mode. Uh, M contains two variables, the line 25 rather contains two variables. M is equal to 100. That's the maximum number of numbers we are going to select. Uh, anything, I mean, 200 takes over, I mean, 100 takes over two minutes. Now, there's enough memory in a 64K Apple II to do many of these, but if we we're doing like, say, 1,000 or 2,000, this would, it would take a long, long time. And R equals a 500, that is the maximum random number. We're going to generate numbers between 1 and 500. So, you know, obviously, if we wanted to make some modifications, and we are going to make some modifications later, uh, let's say we wanted to have uh, larger numbers. Uh, we can make R to be a larger number or smaller, doesn't matter. So 30 we're going to input, we're going to then check that input on lines 40 and 50, make sure for starters that we're not greater than what we need to be. We're also going to make sure that we're not less than zero. The next section is where um, the setup of the array. On 60 we dimension a nums array, array called nums, that's the size of A, and we print out what we're doing and we basically on 70 we go through a loop and we're randomly generating numbers between 1 and 500 until we're done and then we just spit them all out and say here it is and if you remember from our go sub routine class this has been a great place for a print go sub that just prints the array out obviously we have global variables but that's all that does and we have remarks saying hey we're at the top and we might do something like that and uh, here's the last section of code. As mentioned in the introduction with the swapping of the bottles, uh, we have to have some kind of flag that says, yes, we're done, uh, or yes, we swapped rather. And that's what line 100 is. Now, it's a very large variable name, just, just to make it clear. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, that's only the first two letters that are meaningful anyway. But it's not a reserved word, so it doesn't get chopped up. It's not made of reserved words either. So 110 through 130 is where the actual sorting is taking place. The idea is we're going to go through the whole thing, but we only have to index through the uh, one short of the end because if the one is uh, if the, the la next to last item needs to be swapped, we're going to swap it here and set our variable and so then we don't have to go to the very end because we have nothing past it uh, to which to uh, um, compare. So at 120 we're going to look at that and what this is saying is if our number where we currently are is greater, remember we're going from least to greatest, then where we current then the next position then t is going to be a temporary variable of where we are where we are gets set to the next number, and the next space gets set to t. We also set swapped equal to 1, which is our flag to say, yes, we swap things, so we have to keep going. We have 130 is our next x. This is the bottom of our loop. 140 is where we say, hey, if we swap, then we have to go back and try again. Now, this particular algorithm has no, uh, there's no optimization here. This is a straightforward bubble sort. So it's going to go through the entire array every time, doing comparisons with every item until it stops. And this is in part why it is as slow as it is. And we could make some, because uh, basically what we could do is know, hey, we got to the end, so our end is going to get subtracted. And so we'd have, say, A equals A minus 1, and then we go back to line 100. And now we know that the last item isn't going to be compared uh, anymore. And that was the thing that we mentioned in the the bottles where we said, hey, we've already gotten here. We know this last item is already where the biggest, and we're not going to worry about that. And then line 180, we just print everything out, and we go on with life. So let's run it one more time. And let's do a little bit bigger, 15. We can see how, how it runs. We're not going to do anything larger than that. Uh, again, do we have, I don't see any, uh, we don't have any duplicate numbers. But we can force a duplicate number 
and show that since we are doing strictly less than uh, that duplicate numbers will just assume to be equal and they won't be swapped or assume to be less well actually it'll be soon to be less than or equal to so line 25 we're still only going to do 100 numbers but we're going to say you know what whoops let's say we're going to generate gen random numbers between 1 and 50 instead of 500 now when we run um, let's do 20 just 20 numbers I, I did say I'm not going to do more than 100 um, and you see that's a little bit slower and we have 348s at the end and we have 338s as well and that shows you how the pseudo random number stuff is pseudo random I mean if you think you you flip a, a coin you might get three heads in a row uh, you, even if it's a fair flip and it's a fair coin and you might get two tails and you might get a heads and a tail it's not gonna flip necessarily flip back and forth so there you go that's not too bad now let's go back to the code um, let's, let's uh, instead of trying to remember what I did let's just load it again and remember I said let's see if we can't make a little bit of a better routine here um, I'm happy with the label at 180 uh, numbers after sort print when and so let's put a, re a return at 200 and um, what is that going to look like I think we need another end somewhere we're going to print if we go to 100 and then we're going to print we're going to use line 180 as a go sub so we'll kind of go backwards whoops uh, this is a little bit overkill but uh, it's necessary and that's going to be a syntax error this is kind of an on-the-fly discussion here you can see how long everything is and uh, let's make sure we've not introduced any errors we'll just do something very quickly that's good but I want to call that in the middle and I'll show you why here in a minute so we're gonna go sub I think 180 let's see if this is enough it may not be enough space now it, it's enough it's a bit of a of a pain um, but it's not in the right spot because that's after it's done the entire array of swapping uh, that's not what I wanted all right that's odd hmm. the idea here was to show the things bubbling one after another but we're not seeing that we're seeing numbers as chosen the sorting the sorting so obviously uh, there's something wrong here 180 uh, print all right we're going to take a pause I'm going to figure this out okay it was a very simple uh, mistake the go sub needed to be one line 135 outside of the loop so uh, 120 what we're going to do is loop through everything and then we're going to print it out and then we're going to see if we swapped or not as a consequence since basically every run through the sorting list is going to be printed uh, basically as each step through it can be quite long so let's only do five just so we don't have it scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and here's an example again with the numbers you can see things bubbling through the list so in this case the next to the last biggest number is actually first I don't want to go through our random numbers and so so we get look at comparisons and uh, the very first thing we notice is 407 uh, gets pushed up to the front and the uh, the 423 gets to be about halfway through but then that's when it hits 465 and 465 says no you're not you're not uh, bigger than me so nothing's gonna happen it'll go through the loop again and it compares 465 against 187 and it swaps those and that's exactly what we see in that first line so 407 is pushed to that has bubbled to the top 392 has bubbled to the second place 423 has bubbled down to the middle and 187 has bubbled up now 
we can quickly see from this small list that 187 is going to be our smallest number and that's exactly what we see happen in the next lines so we do a search support just think about the algorithm so 407 and 392 are going to be compared and swapped and that's exactly what happens but 407 gets to 423 and nope you're not bigger so it's it skips it that gets skipped so 423 and 187 are compared and swapped and now 423 and 465 get compared and because remember we're, we do not have the, uh, the the code to do any kind of optimization and so everything stops and as you go through each line 392 187 you see it, 187 and 407 were swapped and then we get to the the penultimate line there 187 and 392 uh, are swapped 407 and, for, and at this point it's actually sorted it doesn't know that because we had a swap it does one more run through comparison and doesn't swap anything and now we know we're done and this is in part what makes this algorithm so easy to to implement but is very um, non-optimistic and is very time consuming like i said here on the app this is a one megahertz uh, computer and if i do just a hundred numbers which it doesn't take very long to generate it's only maybe five or six seconds it takes to actually generate the numbers and i'll show you what i mean by that um, it doesn't take long to choose 100 numbers. Now, obviously, this is going to be a lot slower, but you can see how long it is. But this will take, even without all this extra printing, it's going to take two minutes or so to run. And here you can see all kinds of numbers, and I, we don't want this to continue on anyway, so we're going to stop it. Okay, well, this is great. You may be saying, yeah, I can see the numbers and how they're sorting and, and the like, but, you know can we see something a bit more uh, visual and we do have a more visual version of this it is a more simplified and but it also has the optimizations which you're gonna see while it runs you sh it should be obvious that the optimized because there's no pause when it starts sorting again now remember this is running at the same speed it randomly chooses bars of color and bar lengths and again you see it starts finding the biggest one and it hits something bigger and it just bubbles 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 and then bam to the bottom and as it runs you're gonna it should be obvious that it's no longer doing comparisons because it immediately jumps back to the top and immediately we start seeing the next largest thing start falling through until there's no more to do and this is a very good visualization so we see that small little blue and yellow sections they're moving up uh, they're bubbling up to the top now they're the same length so they're not going to get swapped but as you can see it's pushing the bigger pieces bigger pieces now we're about the medium length and now it really starts to pick up speed because it's not doing the comparisons of all those things down below and we're done and then it take very long it's i think it's i forget how many items it is. i think it's like 30. but there's a very good visual representation and we can run it again since it's all random we should get for the most part different things uh, we only have one large one see how it goes bubbling down to the bottom and all the smaller pieces start to bubble toward the top and, but we have to go through the loop over and over the stack of items loops over and over and over again until we don't have anything left to swap and that's that is the the why it's called bubble sort hopefully this shows you a bit more uh, readily why it's called a bubble sort and things bubble up to the top and yes there are all kinds of other sorting algorithms and there's quick sort and merge sort and all, all kinds of stuff um, but you can see now obviously we have faster computers in fact if i kick this into three times speed it goes very rapidly and it's done but if this was a database with millions and millions and millions of, of rows of information with a, in a very large computer system uh, you have to have a very efficient algorithm to do this now this uses all kinds of subroutines and and the like and again we have it setting up to do a uh, random we're choosing 39 uh, rows that's what the ll is it, it does a two-dimensional array 
basically uh, it's a number of elements and then in each ele each row is going to have two columns if you will and that's because we have two pieces of information for every single line to save we have a color and we have a length and that's what goes on on lines 30 and 40 as we're looping through the setup we're choosing a, a length between uh, 1 and, th and 39 we don't want anything shorter than 1 I, although it looks like a 1 is very hard for it to show up and uh, a color the colors are going from uh, 1 to 15 inclusive and uh, and so we don't have any black I think 0 if I remember correctly is black and then it just does all that sets up the system and um, there we just here we have uh, now we're going back on another loop so GR is our graphics mode. Now this is the displaying of everything. Line 130 is the H line command to do those lines. So we set up everything and then we're going to put it out in its initial position. Um, and because of my subroutines, I don't remember exactly what my uh, <laughs> numbering scheme is as it starts to become obvious and that's too much information. So let's, uh, oh, let's look at that length and see if that's too bad. So now we're gonna sort the bars. Um, we're going to start, and because this is optimizing on line 220, the YY is kind of our counter where we're saying we're going to go uh, one less than the length. And because remember, once we don't have to go loop through every single item, just up to the end when we're going to compare, and the new row that's what the new Y that's how it's going to swap. So 230 is when we start looking through the things, we say hey, the exact same thing as we did before. I said, hey, if we compare them, now we have a go sub call. And the go sub is, we, we took the routine, and we remember we, we talked about having subroutines to do things that we commonly do over and over, and we want to reuse. And that's what's happening here. So line 1000 is just a routine to swap rows. Uh, line 2000, uh, 1000, 1000, and 10, 1020. Uh, and then 130 is the, is the new where we are. So the idea being here is we know we swap two things. We want to restore, save where we are. So in case we are at the bottom, we want to actually not compare again. So what happens is as this goes through, eventually that largest item will, will, will in Y will equal Y, and then it's all going to go from one minus that uh, the next time around. And so we don't have it comparing things we've already know we've sorted. Uh, and then 140 is routine to erase the old line. Basically what we have to do is know how big we are. Now we're just doing the whole line. Um, and then we can also have a thing draw new lines. Remember in, ba in AppleSoft Basic on the Apple II, everything is in a, uh, a global variables and that's what this does. So we clear it out on 160 and then we can draw lines of however big they are, uh, lines, um, 1080 and 1090 and of course we return um, I believe this is what we had previously and let's look so in sorting so sorting complete so unlike the other one which was pretty much a straightforward shot uh, this uses subroutines we are reducing the size of, of Y each time and uh, the YY rather and that's what the YY equals NY and then NY gets set back to zero because we want to make sure that uh, we were capturing the new Y. The Y is is the last item that we're going to uh, compare and each time through it gets reduced and that's why there's not a pause to go do all those silly comparisons especially as the things bubble to the top it immediately goes back to the top because once we pushed something to the bottom we don't compare it ever again with anything else and then we go one minus step so anyway there we go there's a nice bubble sort run and we'll do it one more time just for giggles and you should see how things are bubbling up and how great uh, interesting that is uh, and uh, that is it that is the end of today's braincast and I hope you've enjoyed this look at bubble sort on the Apple II uh, E, this is the Apple II E, this is obviously the emulator. And uh, the interesting things, I, I didn't know about this when I was uh, 30 plus five years ago when I was actually programming in Apple II with friends Apple IIs. This would have been something interesting to explore. Again, you can see how things bubble and bubble and bubble.
All right. Thanks for stopping by on the Braincast. Thanks for clicking like. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, we're not we're going to be doing more things than just stuff on the Apple II. If there's anything on the Braincast you want to see, you want to know about, you want to challenge us, please let us know. All right. There we go. Bye.